the dairy, oh, the wife takes the child, the child takes the nurse, the child takes the Note. Mark the corresponding button holes on the opposite front panel, ensuring they align with the button when the coat is closed. Takes the nurse. Hi ho, the dairy, oh, the child takes the nurse. Step 4C. Drafting the lapel pattern. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our all-inclusive guide on drafting jacket lapels. Today, we will dig into the art and science of constructing this vital component of a jacket. But briefly, do you know what the value of a lapel in a jacket is? If you didn't know, lapels are not just practical. Instead, they are a defining article that adds style and personality to any jacket. Whether you are an aspiring seamstress, stroke tailor, or you are a seasoned professional, please, understanding how to draft and create the perfect lapel is a key skill to style. So, follow this guide in a step-by-step -step way up to the end as we draft the pattern for a notched lapel. The dairy, oh, the child takes the nurse. With your measurements in hand, let us draft the lapel pattern in details. And here we will be using the collar line that we drafted in our episode 3, 2 and 1. And if you, if you haven't watched those episodes, please, I request you go and watch them. Then you come and watch this one. But if you have watched 1, 2 and 3, we can continue from here. <laughs> Okay, step 4C, drafting the lapel. At this collar line point 15, measure and mark outwards from point 15 to 31, 0 0.75 inches. Next is to define the break point. At this point 31, define the lapel break line. And this break line point is where the lapel falls over. Now, connect point 28 and 31 together with a line to create the lapel break line. You prolong this line from 31 out to upwards in this way. Now, this dotted line that we have just created at point 31 will be our guide when we are drafting the collar for this jacket. At this point where the break line intersects with the collar line, we mark it point 32. Now, let us determine the lapel width. For a classic lapel, the width typically ranges from 2.5 to 4 inches, depending on personal preference and style. But for this tutorial, I'll go with the lapel width of 2.75 inches. Now, at point 32, I mark outwards 2.75 inches for my lapel width. But this lapel width, you can make it big or you can make it small. So it depends on how wide or small you want your lapel to be.
Now, at this point 33, use a curved ruler or a free hand to create a smooth natural shape or transition from the neckline to the lapel edge by connecting point 33 to 28 together. Before creating a smooth and natural shape of your lapel, let us first create the notch. To create the notch, draw a small V shape at the breakpoint. The size and the angle of the notch can vary based on the style and preference. As for this tutorial, I will mark from this point 33 upwards 1.5 inches along this lapel outer line. Then at this point, I pivot my measurements of 1.5 inches along this collar line. Where the collar, where my 1.5 inches touches this collar line, I mark that point for my notch. Now, I connect these points together to create my lapel notch. <laughs> We can now shorten this line like this. Next, extend the lapel with this in a curvy way by marking diagonally towards the outer edge of the front panel. The farmer takes the wife, the farmer takes the wife. Hi ho the dairy, oh the farmer takes the wife. Wow, wonderful, ladies and gentlemen. Our lapel has already taken shape and you can use this method to adapt any style and design of a lapel that you, you feel like you should draft. The wife takes the child, the wife takes the child, hi ho the dairy, oh, the wife takes the child. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations. Do you know that you've just created a lapel? Okay, let us move on. And this is how our front panel is looking so far. And this is the front panel. And this one is our back panel. I think what is remaining, it will be drafting the side panel. But before we draft the side panel, let us add seam allowance to this panel of ours. The child takes the nurse. The child. The next step, step 4D, adding seam allowances. Finally, add seam allowance to the edges of the front panel to allow for sewing, to allow space for sewing. Typically, a seam allowance of 5 over 8 inches or 1.5 centimeters is sufficient. Or if you are not neat enough, you can leave seam allowance of 0 0.5 inches that you can, after sewing, you can extreme it off. Takes the nurse. Hi ho, the dairy oh, the child takes the nurse. The nurse takes the cow. The nurse takes the cow. Hi. For most of you who are interested to know the program that I'm using, I'm using Adobe Illustrator to create these patterns. And you being a designer or a fashion designer, you need to learn this edit. And this, you should befriend this software. It's good. It helps you create your digital patterns. So see how I'm adding seam allowances using this pattern. I mean, using this software. And if you need a tutorial about this software, please tell me. Then if I can fix time, we shall learn how to do it also. So we are adding, I'm adding my seam allowances. I hold the dairy, oh, the nurse takes the cow, the cow takes the dog, the cow takes the dog. I hold the dairy, oh, the cow takes the dog. The dog takes the cat, the 
the dog takes the cat. Hi ho, the Dario, the dog takes the cat. The cat takes the mouse. Now, <laughs> there you have it. By following these steps, you can accurately calculate and draft a double breasted coat front panel with pockets, overlap, neckline, and button placement. Note, adjustments may be needed based on your specific design preferences and measurements. Okay, what do I have? Let me just say happy drafting. See you in the side panel drafting side. Bye bye. The, the cat takes the mouse. Hi ho, the Dario. The cat takes the mouse.